Hello and welcome to the Robin Knits podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about fiber crafts of different kinds and we'll just run through a few things. We have finished objects, we have works in progress and we have some knitting sewing plans. And if this is something you are interested in, you are in the right place and um, I hope you enjoy this podcast. with our finished objects um, I don't have much <laughs> it's just what I've done in the last two weeks uh, the first one is what I'm wearing I've spoken so much about this that I don't know how much more information I have to give um, I'll just talk a, a little about the pattern and the yarns the first thing about the pattern this is a very addictive pattern it's called the hepatica sweater this was a test knit for Emma's knits um, she does not have a YouTube channel, but she's an amazing designer. You can find her on Instagram. Please go follow her if you can. Um, she also designs lovely stitch markers and earrings. I wish I had one of those to go with these, but she does not ship them to Canada, so I can't purchase them. Um, so this sweater, um, Honestly, it took me a total of seven days. I counted the days I actually worked on the sweater. It took me a total of seven days to work on this sweater. And um, the main color is Knit Picks Twill. And it's a fingering weight yarn. I held it double. Uh, so the main color is Knit Picks Twill Fingering in the colorway Horacha and all the contrast colors are either leftover sock yarns or minis that have been lying around and I haven't used for a long time. I just put together a palette that was more autumnal, uh, more, it, I'm, I'm sure when you look at it, it gives more fall vibes. I am going to I'm going to style it with a black skirt and uh, brown boots. Um, I'll put a picture here <laughs> so you can see what I mean and um, I know it's winter but uh, uh, this is still in, for now I know I'm gonna wear this inside the house but I know in the fall next fall this this year's fall I'm going to be wearing this a lot outside I love how this turned out um, it is simple garter stitch so you just knit 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 and that's it um, so when you do the shoulder panels the back and the front you just knit back and forth once you join them in the round you do one round of knit and one round of purls and that was nice as well because you have a count of oh the next time I'm going to do knit I'm gonna join a new color and it was so much fun doing this um, Especially because I had this many colors, I actually uh, had a total of 18 colors. Um, and just looking at all the colors, putting them together also gives you time to think about what color am I going to add next? Uh, what, uh, um, what color would go with what? Oh, I just added a red or maybe an orange. Should I change it to a different color? Should I maybe put green instead of yellow? Because orange and yellow are close. Should I separate them? Should I put them together? It was lovely just thinking through this whole project and um, the original pattern I think has only two contrast colors uh, but there are some testers who use three I used more um, so this is just this is left up to your imagination you can use this sweater as an advent calendar project uh, next Christmas or um, leftover anything that is all the scrappy yarn you want to use up you could definitely make this honestly it does not even matter um i'm somebody who wouldn't have bothered if the stripes on both sleeves did not match it's okay i would have thought it was funky and cool but if you are somebody who is particular about that then you could even divide your um uh, yarn and it it does not take too much yarn at all honestly i think of all the minis that i've used i haven't used more than seven to ten grams of each mini so um yeah you just need that much <laughs> if you're using this many minis um 
but it's a beautiful pattern it's probably coming out the end of this month or early next month when it comes out i'm of course gonna talk about it and keep you all updated but uh this is the hepatica sweater uh the good news also is that this twill fingering yarn it's i like it it's super washed merino but i really like the feel of it it was out of stock and i thought it was going to um it, they were never it, I thought they were just gonna take it off and never gonna uh, bring it back to the store but it is back and it was in the ball form earlier it's in the Hank form now but it's back and so uh, you can always go pick this there are some colors that are not there from the original collection but I'm still happy for whatever is there this color though Horacha is available now and um, you can go get it from the Netflix uh, online store so this is my first finished object. The second one is a baby knit. This is the baby Eosa sweater. There you go. I even put the buttons. I'm so proud of this. <laughs> the original sweater is actually just one color, but I decided to con do a contrast color for the ribbing, the top, and then the edges. Um, the size that I picked is a newborn size. Um, it's because for this baby I'm also making a bigger um, another knit pieces in the three month size so I picked the newborn size for this so this yarn is superwash merino it is from a chick that knits this colorway I know is called Robin's egg I forgot what this one's called I'm going to put it up on the screen um, this actually was from my stash I think I got this about two years ago um, when I did I just started fiber arts I did not know the value I, I I could not comprehend the conversion between Canadian dollars and, an, and Indian rupees and so um, I bought a lot of hand dyed yarn and now I do understand the value and I've started making very very conscious purchases but this was back in those days. I don't regret it though. I love the colorway. I love the brown speckles it has. So if you look at it you'll understand how beautiful the color is. Um, I used a single skein and I haven't, um, there was only one skein of this yarn. I haven't alternated skeins but you can see how beautifully it's distributed. It does not it does not have color pooling it's a beautiful beautiful yarn um, this was in the DK weight I used four millimeter needles for the entire um, um, entire project um, yeah so this is it this is going to the baby and I am very very excited about this I'm excited for him to wear he's not yet here but I am waiting for him to be born and um, to shower all the love <laughs> so this is uh, the baby AOS test sweater this is also I forgot the designer this is the knit pearl girl and I'll put up her name all right um, this is a good segue into works in progress because after I finished this I wanted to make him a matching hat and so I started working on the classic ripped hat by Pearl Soho this is the baby size it's a simple one by one rib i'm sure a lot of you have already made it and um it's such a quick project i cast it on last night i worked on it for maybe an hour and this is how much it came up to i'm gonna finish it today for sure and then block it and dry it today is friday so i'm hoping by sunday it's gonna be dry and uh the mom can have both of them i also want to give it before i get more ideas because you know it's like cooking you start cooking uh when you have invited somebody over you start with something simple and then you feel like oh you've got some more time i'll cook something more or i'll make something more and then it just gets exhausted so i finished this sweater i made i'm gonna finish the hat today i do not want to wait until i feel like oh i can make baby booties as well so i just want to give it away before uh, i come up with more ideas to make for this baby 
not that I don't want to make I do want to have um, um, I have other projects in mind and so I want to give it priority uh, but also this baby is gonna be this is my best friend's baby I'm the godmother so this baby is gonna be in my life for a very long time and I can always always knit him stuff and I want to knit him something new every year so I want to keep the baby booties for another year maybe so this is um, for the baby, the hat and the sweater. Um, I also made this for the baby. This is um, uh, this is the baby bear onesie. This is a knitting for olive pattern. And um, if you look at it, you'll understand it's got little bear ears. Um, and yeah, this was the sleeve. This is the sleeve. This is what it looks like right now. Um, so it looks like a cardigan. Um, I actually bound off the end. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to put it on hold, do the ribbing, and then go back. Join this in the round, and then separate it for the legs. I made this in the three month size, but I have a, I have a pro not a problem. It's just just a thought process that's been on for too long and i decided that i'll just do the ribbing disconnect the yarn and then think about it i want to finish the ribbing the, the button band for this i want to finish the front button bands and then i'll probably think about it and make a decision i want to see if i can f stop it as a cardigan because this baby is not going to be here for too long they're going to move to a warmer climate for the next few months and come back and by the time the co baby comes back he's almost going to be a year old and this is not going to fit him anymore so uh and warmer climate is just not okay to <laughs> wear thick warm onesies so i'm thinking i'll just make this into a cardigan and then he can use it for as long as he wants it can be um it can be a layering piece and then they can stop using it once he's comfortable or he's grown out of it and they don't have to use this anymore. So I'm thinking I'll leave it as a cardigan. Um, I'll probably do the button band, I'll do the sleeves, I'll close the ears and then think about it. But this is such a fun pattern. Um, every bit of the pattern has something new in it. You do the ribbing and then there's something new after. You have short rows, then you shape for the years, you put the, you, you seam the ends together and then um, you start the raglan and there's some more short rows in the body. It is such a beautiful pattern even as a knitter, even though you're gift knitting, you do not feel like it's a boring knit. You do not feel like you, it's just going on and on and it's the same thing but you know you're going to try new techniques, you're going to try new things and that is a beautiful part of the pattern. I have used Knit Picks Brava in the color weight Peacock and uh, it's actually a worsted weight yarn but I have used um, the suggested needle was the size 4 millimeter needles and that has been uh, good even with the worsted weight and so this is the baby bear um, I am going to I'll probably have made a decision by the end of this week <laughs> after I did the ribbing and then probably the next time you would see it as a finished object. Alright, my next work in progress, you've already heard about this, it's living in this project bag. Um, I remember not finding the brand, uh, but I do now. This is from home, this is from India, so it's called Canvas Kata. <laughs> it's a very Indian word. and. Um, it's actually, uh, this is actually a bucket bag, but I am using it as a project bag. So this is where my own sweater lives. This is a pattern by November Knits and I am using Pearl Soho yarn. That's the yarn I'm using. Um, it's such a beautiful yarn. Um, the more I am working with it, the more I am learning to appreciate it. So I'll talk first about the progress. Now I'm also hoping that um, that I I've actually ordered some progress keepers. I'm hoping I get it by this week or early next week, and then I can start marking them on my projects and showing it as I go. 
and this is a beautiful beautiful pattern it's called the moon sweater it's by november knits the collar is ideally supposed to be folded and seamed like stitched inwards yes that's how it's supposed to look so this is what it's looking like right now now this sweater, um, I had to, if I were going by the actual directions and the size that was instructed in the pattern, I would have to pick the size 4. But this is a sweater that has a lot of positive ease. When I say a lot of positive ease, it's anywhere from 15 to 20 centimeters. And I'm sure, I, I was sure I didn't want that much positive ease. Like even this, if you look at it, there's a lot of positive ease and um, the next time I make this I would size down for sure. So for this I decided, especially after making this, I had better information on how to decide for this. And I decided I'd go size down. So I went to size 3 but when I did the gauge swatch I did not like how the fabric looked so I went up a needle size. I went up to 5.5. So I got better drape for sure and um, this yarn. I, uh, what I like also doing is when I'm at a particular point in the project, if I'm going to add a new skein, I would block it mid-project just to make sure that it hasn't grown too much. Because when you do the gauge swatch, you would block it of course, but it does not give you complete information. Sometimes the weight of the sweater, sometimes when you add sleeves, a lot of things could change with how the sweater is looking. So I usually block midway to see how it's going and this is blocked so um except for i guess the last inch the rest of the sweater is blocked and i really like how it feels i like how it looks this is the first time i am making a big project using non-super wash merino and uh when you actually look at the yarn um this is what the yarn looks like it's actually rustic it feels it literally feels like paper and um, I was worried about how it would feel on skin but after blocking I really like how it feels I feel it gets I'm, I'm sure it's gonna get softer with each wear um, this is a 93% merino and 3.5% cashmere and 3.5% silk um, I think the silk are just the tweedy bits in this I also like the Tweety bits if you look at it it's got blues oranges greens and purple yeah so I like how it looks and so it has gotten me thinking to make uh, an edit an addition to the project I once I finish I want to embroider flowers on the top and make it run down one side of the sleeves or left and I'm thinking I'll probably use orange or yellow thread to do that yellow embroidery thread um, orange because it's got the orange bits in it and uh, yellow if I want to make it low contrast just as a style statement yes there is work done but you have to look keen to look at it keenly to see it, uh, to see the details so I'm I'm just I'm still thinking about it I know I'm gonna embroider for sure but the colors are what I'm thinking about and other big modification I'm going to make on this sweater is I'm going to add some details of the Eclair sweater. Now the Eclair sweater is another sweater I've been looking at for a very, very long time. I'll put a picture of how it looks here. So if you look at the Oon sweater and the Eclair sweater, I feel they kind of look the same, especially with just the, just the feel of it, the oversized feel. I feel they look the same, but I like the Eclair sweaters um the side seam i like the detail so here's what i'm going to do what i did was also this is part of the pattern it's not something i did the ribbing of the un sweater goes into the raglan and i kept the ribbing onto the sides as well so if you look at it i added ribbing under the arms this was not recommended. You just go stock in it after after you join in the round. You just go stock in it. I decided to keep the ribbing, and once I split for the side um, slits, I am going to continue doing this ribbing. So I'll probably do the back portion of it first. Once I split, I'll do the back portion first, and then when I do the front portion, I'm going to pick up over this so it would overlap 
and so even if there's a breeze or something and if it flies it's not gonna be very uh, it's not gonna expose much that's the goal so I'm gonna overlap and then do the front after so those are the modifications I'm looking at doing for the Oon sweater so far it has been wonderful I am waiting to uh, finish all the baby knits and then I will go on and work on this so that is the Oon sweater for you um, the next one okay this is more of a plan so I can talk about it this is um, this is uh, the spring fling sweater by the petty knitter and it's just sitting in a tote bag again this is from home this is from India and this is I haven't even removed the label yet I don't know it's just abbreviations I don't think it's focusing but oh there, there you go yeah it looks like just abbreviations I'm not sure what brand it is but anyway this is the tote bag this I feel tote bags are the cheapest way to um, save projects the moment you look going for a bag that is a project bag for knitting the prices just go up so I prefer getting just a uh, tote bag or a bucket bag and then using it as a project bag it serves the purpose so <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing that um, so this is where all the yarn for the spring fling sweater is sitting I apologize for the crinkles I'm gonna pull out a bag that is plastic try to make it quick okay I'm sorry I'm sorry all right the yarn that I've actually used for this is um, this one it's called any uh, it's called Ibram and um, it says merino lamb's wool and mulberry silk and it is such a nice it's it's a very squishy yarn but it feels very woolly wool um, this I got from the knitting loft when they had one of their sales um, I actually got for this sweater but when you look at this yarn it actually looks like almost to me as a new person newbie to yarn it looked like a DK yarn but it's actually a fingering weight yarn and um, I would have to hold it double because the spring fling sweater is actually in the DK weight gauge but I did not have enough yarn and also this yarn is expensive and I did not want to spend money buying more expensive yarn to hold double for a sweater so I went ahead and got knit picks palette I'm sure you would have heard of it by now. This colorway is called Bouquet Heather. And if you look at these two colorways together, it's beautiful. They were such a good match. And to think that all of it was bought online, I am so surprised by how well they matched. And um, what I did was I went ahead and um, um, did this wound them I wound them together and it looks like the same yarn they do not look like different colorways at all and also I was good I did a gauge swatch <laughs> and this is what it looks like it's beautiful so this is um, uh, this is knitted using 3.75 millimeter needles and uh, the gauge was bang on um, I was surprised I hit gauge and I was also very very happy about it now this is the main color the contrast color is a cream uh, it's, it's a more creamy version um, so this is the white version of the same um, in room colorway um, and um, this is I got the ball band inside um, this is the Knit Picks palette and this is the colorway Oyster Heather and this is what I'll be holding so this is the color if you look at these two they are not as close as the um, as this colorway and um, 
I'm going to be holding it together. I did wind them together as well. I'll show it to you. This is what it looks like wound up together. I feel it's okay. Uh, there, there is marling for sure, but it is very, very low contrast, so I'm okay with it. Um, I just started on the ribbing. I felt like I had to, had to cast it on. I'm sorry, I'm trying to... There we go, it's focused, yeah. I had to cast it on on the day I wound up the yarn and I like it, but I have to practice some self-control because I do not want to start a new project until I finish my own sweater. And so I started it. I know it's going to work. I'm excited about it. It goes amazing. I love the feel of the yarn over the Knit Picks needles. I have the Knit Picks. I think it's called, uh, it's just a nickel. I forget what it's called it's just a nickel plated needles but I love the feel of the yarn over these needles I am not very happy with the cards of course I'm sure you've heard about it again but um, it's it it has a lot of kinks especially when you're working the um, collar and um, you have to use a magic loop to do that it has a lot of kinks so that is a little difficult to handle but otherwise the feel of the needles the feel of the yarn over the needles is really good and I am enjoying this knit. I'm looking forward to doing it I first want to finish my own sweater give it my hundred percent attention and then move on to that so that is my next work in progress now I have one more, I, uh, this is a knitting plan, it's not a work in progress, I haven't cast it on, but it is more of a commission work. Um, I've been commissioned to do, make this cardigan and um, uh, this person just wanted a crop cardigan and um, I know what color she wanted it in, so I picked the Amy Christopher's. I'll put the name of the pattern here. I should know this. It's just escaping my mind. I'll put the name of the pattern here and you'll see it. So um, I picked this cardigan because again, it's a simple one. I would be able to still practice my pearls and get comfortable with it because this is a year where I want to use more cardigans for sure. So I'm going to start um, this cardigan once I finish my own sweater. I'm going to do the cardigan and the spring fling sweater together at once. Um, that's my knitting plan. I'm going to be using Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, and I think it's uh, Rabbit it's some rabbit colorway. <laughs> I'll put the names up again on the screen here along with the picture of the yarn. And so I'm looking forward to making this as well. Uh, that's a knitting plan. I have one last one. This is an embroidery piece. Um, this is something I had been working on in 2021. No, scrap that, 2022. Now, 2022, I started this and um, 2023, by April, I found knitting. <laughs> I started knitting, I learned how to knit and I've never stopped since then. But this year, I want to make it one of my objectives to balance my hobbies. Um, I want to do paint dates with my sister. It's going to be online. I also want to go back to some of the things I used to enjoy earlier. I want to add a few more crochet projects this year. And um, I decided I'll go back to some of my old hobbies, old projects that I have not completed. Pick it up and try finishing it. And um, see if I want to start something new and balance it. Now, as a prologue to this project, I want to talk a little about Precious Moments. I don't know if you've heard about this. So Precious Moments, when I was a child, I had a, a children's Bible. And it it was this Precious Moments Bible. And it had, um, it had this beautiful pictures, illustrations. And they were so enduring. They were very, very adorable. So, um... I had this Bible for a while and somebody gave a book. This was the book. So if you look at it, you'll know how old this is. Um, we never got these books in India. So this was someone from here had purchased it many, many years ago. I don't know. Um, 
I'm trying to find the publishing date. 1982 is when this was published. Uh, so this was 19, this is a book from 1982. I know it does not sound so long ago. I don't know why I feel like it was so long ago. And this is somebody who got it from the US, brought it to India, gifted it to somebody. And this person was using it for a very long time. And then she began having arthritis and then she couldn't really do the embroidery anymore. And I don't think she used this as much, but she handed it down to me. And um, I enjoyed this. I learned I asked my mom how to teach me but my mom was very enthusiastic about teaching me as well and she taught me how to do the cross stitch how to do how to make cross stitches and so um, this was my first cross stitch book I'll show you a few of the patterns uh, I got printouts of a few so this is what they look like And um, it's beautiful. It's counted cross stitch. It's just like color work. It's just like knitting color work, but then you have different. Well, I'm sorry. It's another print. Yeah, this is what they look like. And so these were either framed or they are made into pillows, and it's so beautiful. And. Um, you can imagine just like knitting uh, yarn even the threads had so much of my attention back when I was younger and um, I have a few more printed of these I found on Pinterest um, I finished these so I had these printed off no I'm sorry this was a photocopy of one of the patterns in this book I had this photocopied so I could carry it around in a more um, uh, so that it's more accessible and I can work on it if I am not at home. Um, this is one of the finished ones. This was actually captioned, God loves a cheerful giver. Um, also, I made a lot of changes to the colors. So this was technically, I want to see if I can, oh, here it is. This is what it's supposed to look like. I wanted this to look a more like me so <laughs> this is what it actually looked like I changed it to this so it has black hair brown skin like me with the color of dogs that I love um, and so that that is a finished one I think yeah, I think that's completely finished yes um, I do have some finishing as soon just tying up yarns um, this is what the back of cross stitch would look like So you can see it's 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 definitely not too complicated anybody can do it honestly, so um, This was one of the finished um, uh, Products and I did I had gone on and started a new one. And this is what it looks like I Have my goal is to finish it uh, there is another bird that has to be embroidered and I need to do the outlines I am going to be using black thread to do the outlines if you look at this part you will see this black outlines it kind of um, it kind of shows shows the image it sh kind of sharpens the image and so it's nicer so I'm gonna do that and um, I want to see if I can finish this sometime soon um, even this I had actually changed the dress what it looked like it was a plain dress I put the um, polka dots on it I did the stripes and I'm so <laughs> happy I did it now that I picked it up I feel like oh I should do this um, and um, yeah, you can get these books. Uh, when we moved here, it suddenly felt so different to be in the West where all of these books are available and you can purchase them off the internet. And so I went on Etsy, looked for the Precious Moments books and I got a few more. Um, I'm going to send a few of these to my mom because I know she's going to really appreciate this. She does a lot of embroidery and she's the one who taught me embroidery. So there was one, I think the one I have... Um, the one I have was book three. This is book one. And I'll just quickly show you a few patterns in this book. 
this is what a few patterns in this book look like it is such a beautiful book and this was in such this is in such a pristine condition and um i got another book this is just a single design and i'm gonna make this soon this is the one that i just showed you oops this is the one that i made so this was i was i actually got this off the internet but i was so happy to find the book um this is a single design again this is a single design again and then this one that's all about weddings forgive me but i love weddings um when it's someone else's wedding because mine was so long i fell asleep during mine yeah, these are such beautiful patterns and I can't wait to get started. I have a lot of embroidery yarn and I feel I need to start making use of it. So I am so excited. Um, it just felt so good to bring all these out, to touch them, feel them and just remind myself that, hey, this was something you're used to do. Maybe you should try it again. So I am so excited to get started on these and I will share some of them as and when I start projects. These in particular are very long projects. They are not even like knitting where you can start and finish in probably a month or um, or, or just a few weeks. This is going to take, each project takes a while because um, you need to be aware, you need to first of all carry the pattern around. You need to keep looking at it so it's not like you can knit and then watch something you'll have to constantly look at it because cross stitch is all about counting numbers and also carrying different colors of threads and so i need to see if now that i'm more grown up <laughs> i need to see if i can find a better way of organizing all the colors i pick and um just to see how i can carry them around but yeah i'm glad i got to share this with you because I want to get started now. I will of course keep you updated. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for letting me give you company. Thank you for watching. Leaving comments. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.